the derivative can be used to uh, produce uh, some of the kinematic equations. If we're given a starting equation, we're going to take as given that the position as a function of time, so x of t, now this does not mean x times t, it's x of t, is equal to some starting position plus the starting velocity in the x direction multiplied by the time that this motion occurs plus one half the acceleration in the x direction and multiplied by the time squared. So we're talking about some one-dimensional motion where there can be acceleration present. This is not projectile motion but uh, motion along some x-axis. So can we use the derivative to uh, come up with the velocity. <coughs> so we know the basic definition with uh, finite intervals, we'd find the average velocity with delta x over delta t. If we want to find the instantaneous velocity, then we use the derivative. The derivative of the position as a function of time with respect to the time. So, We've covered the derivative in previous uh, videos, so let's go ahead and start it here. We've got a polynomial, uh, x naught, the v naught t, one half at squared, and we process this by taking the derivative of each term. So we get the derivative of x naught with respect to t, the derivative of v naught t with respect to t, the derivative of one half at squared with respect to t. Do you remember what the derivative of a constant is? x naught is the fixed number. It's the position at the start of the time interval. What's the derivative of a constant? You should be saying zero. It's not changing. The derivative measures change and with respect to the uh, variable. So there's no change in x naught with respect to time. For the derivative of v naught times t in the power derivatives, uh, we pull down the power as a multiplying coefficient. This is t to the first power. And then we reduce the power by 1. So down here, I didn't write it, but it's v naught times 1, the old power, multiplied by t to the 0 power. And t to the 0 power is another 1 factor. So we just get v naught. Over here, the constant survives, the 0.5. The power comes down as a multiplier, and I chose to write it out here instead of just in front of the t. But this 2 comes down as a multiplier. The a is a constant, so it's here for us. And then we have the power changing from 2 down to 1. So we get the first power of t. And of course, we can simplify this a little bit. 0.5 times 2, that's a factor of 1. So we get the familiar equation, the velocity at the end of some time interval is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by the time. Okay, so the derivative has helped us find the velocity function when we were given the acceleration function and given, or sorry, the position function given that the acceleration is a constant. Can we go one step further? Can we use the derivative to determine the acceleration of the object as a function of time? So a little tricky wording here. hope you're thinking about that, but uh, we'll see what happens. We have the definition of average acceleration. It'll be delta v over delta t. How much did the velocity change in some finite time interval? We get the instantaneous acceleration when we take the derivative the derivative of the velocity function with respect to time. Well, we have the velocity function up here, v naught plus at. So we're going to substitute that in. And again, we have to take the derivative of each term, the derivative of v naught with respect to time, the derivative of at with respect to time, the derivative of a constant. v naught is the velocity at a specific time. It's something that does not change as motion occurs. This is the velocity at the beginning of the time interval. So that's the derivative of a constant, which again is zero. Over here, a t to the first power, the one comes down as a multiplier. We're left with t to the zero power, which is a one factor. So we get a. So we're seeing that the acceleration for all times is equal to a. There's no t on this side, and we have no time dependence. The acceleration is constant. Acceleration is constant, as it should be. So the derivative can be used to produce some facts about uh, 
uh, motion in a straight line, if we're given the starting equation, the relationship of uh, position with initial position, initial velocity, the time, and the acceleration, one application of the derivative produces the velocity as a function of time, v naught plus at. Another application of the derivative, taking the derivative of velocity, produces the acceleration. And we find that there's no time dependence. There's no t symbol over here after we finish these derivative operations. The acceleration does not depend on the time. The acceleration is constant. So keep practicing with that. Ask your instructor some questions.